and welcome to Mile Higher Podcast, episode 45. And today we are doing a very interesting ponder sesh. And so we're really excited about this. If you've not heard of our ponder sessions before, it's basically where we both find really interesting facts, stories, information, just little tidbits that, you know, we can't make a full podcast about, but right. we still want to talk about. So we kind of like That's jam a, a bunch of little things and it's like, it's like trail mix. It's like a bunch of random <laughs> things and, you know, you just eat it as we go. Yeah, they're delicious bites of, yeah, of delicious interesting bites. information. <laughs> yes. Maybe things you've never heard of, hopefully. So, And what I like about it is that we don't tell each other what we found. So we kind of like teach each other as we go, which is really fun. Yeah, it's like a birthday party for both of us, you know, a, a surprise party. Or <laughs> a surprise party. Yeah, a surprise party. Because we never know what we're going to pull out of each other's back pockets or. <laughs> God. <laughs> Why did that oh sound my so God. weird? <laughs> Never mind. I don't know pockets. what I was trying to say. I'm going to pull this out of your back pocket. <laughs> We're going to pull shit out of her back. I'm going to pull shit out of her okay. back pocket and she's going to pull it out of mine. Oh my God. All right. Anyways, <laughs> that was so weird. Anyways, we launched grinders this week. There might be a few left. Maybe go take a look and see if there are. I don't yes, know. They're selling out sure. very quick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they might be all gone by the time you guys are hearing this, but it's worth checking out. And if this you guys want to see more, definitely let us know because we yeah. will make more because mm -hmm. yeah i mean who doesn't want a really cool grinder right yeah and if you do want one in the comments let us know if you'd rather have a green a blue or a black yes yes, yes. so that dropped this past week and also what happened this week is we got a few new seller patrons i just want to shout them out real quick and that was ashley chris janet jordan and samantha thank you guys so much for all of your support as well as yes. to all of our other 2000 patrons out there. Thank you guys so much. We really do appreciate all of your support and it helps keep everything moving forward. And hopefully one day we will get into the new studio. <laughs> it's been a harder process than we thought. Yes. I mean, I feel like with most projects in life, you, you start always, uh, them yeah. and then you think they're going to be like, oh, you know, we'll get it done in a month. And no, no, that's what I thought. And then, it's yeah. a major like construction project. And, you know, you have to order a lot of things and hire people. And so, yep. Should be soon though. It and will we're be really soon. I think hopefully it. by the beginning of the new year is the is the goal. So yes. that will be very exciting. But today's Patreon question comes from Blake and he said he has a question for both of us that goes back to the simulation theory. Ooh, I always love mm, answering questions too. about this. So he said, So I don't know if you guys have heard of nerve gear, but it's just like virtual reality, but the helmet taps into your brain and your body shuts down, but your consciousness goes straight into the game. So all your senses are there, but your body is laying down somewhere. So my question is, what problems do you think this will make for the future? And what advantages could this help with in the future? So wait, I have a question. That's already a thing. No. Oh, it's like, it's, it's like, developed? yeah, it's like a, it's an idea right now. It's not like out or any, Ooh. even close to being out. I was going to say that yeah, sounds yeah, a little yeah, fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, I mean, I think there are many reasons why this could be a bad thing. First of all, you know, you're going to have people that plug in and just go to sleep and start a new life in a game <laughs> until their body eventually dies. And then would you die in the game? I don't even know. Well, if your Maybe consciousness you live is on hooked into in the it. game, I mean, this is some San Junipero shit right here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you know what San Junipero is, thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you've seen YouTube. that Black Mirror. It's, yeah. Black Mirror episode. It's definitely worth watching if you're interested in the simulation theory and kind of these futuristic ideas of what could happen. Um, it's a very interesting one, but. Yeah, I think it's very possible that with the way that virtual reality is going, like Blake mentioned the Oculus Rift, which is mm -hmm. out everywhere and they just made a like a $200 one that basically anybody oh, can really? get. That's like a on the go type thing. Um, I have the full Oculus Rift that like hooks up to your computer and everything. And that, even that just like blows my mind anytime it, I put it on crazy. because you really do feel fully immersed. And mm -hmm. even though it's not like all your senses aren't tapped into it, just your, you know, audio visual, but even like there's like this one little demo on it where you float around in the space station and it's like a virtual reality of being in the international space station and when i'm doing that you literally feel like you're floating like it gives your yeah. body a sensation of floating of dragging and pulling yeah you like, know what i'm it saying knows like, how to ch it like changes the gravity almost your perspective of gravity it's really weird but your mind like your mind totally like gets lost in this new world. reality yeah and you lose this one and yeah well think about it your brain's supposed to react to whatever reality it's perceiving so yeah. if it's perceiving it's the reality it's going to like start adapting to it that's true 
So it's pretty interesting, but yeah, I think it's I think there's some go really far with that stuff. I mean, no, but how good is that though? But that's uh, the thing is like, but the, are, the problem is they're gonna do it whether it's good for us or not. It's gonna happen. Yeah, and I mean, people are gonna go crazy with it whether yeah. that you tell them no or you know, it's just like people who are addicted to their fucking phones right now. You know, that don't ever get off them or addicted to Facebook or anything. So. I don't know. It's going to be really wild to see what happens with virtual reality in the coming years. It's going to be something that is going to become a part of our daily lives. I feel like I think in some way, shape or form, yeah, virtual reality is going to be inseparable from actual reality or mm -hmm. this reality we perceive right now. So I agree. That's a very interesting question, Blake. Thank you so much. Yeah. But let's get right into things this week's stories. And now it's time for Woke news this week thank you right. morgan thank you <laughs> thanks morgan appreciate it so today's first story is michigan legalized recreational marijuana mm, congrats, on thursday michigan. they became the 10th state in the country and the first in the midwest which is a big deal actually they're yeah. the first state in like that Technically area of the, the country midwest, yeah. that legalized it so but they're not actually going to be able to start buying it until next year hmm but basically, it's pretty much the same uh, laws as everywhere else for the most part as far as what you can carry and what you can grow and all that good sort of thing. And obviously, you're restricted to smoking in private, not in public. But it sounds like they will have to wait until December of next year before they can even apply for or get licenses to open dispensary. So it's going to be like another year before they even get it, yeah. uh, get access to it. So, But this is really interesting. And... Let me let me know if you've heard of this though. So Utah this past um, election, they voted to legalize medicinal marijuana, mm -hmm. and what they what all the voters of Utah voted on is something called Prop Two. But what's interesting is that they they voted this Prop Two legislation through, but then literally right after it, the Republican dominated Utah House of Representatives re approved the substitute bill that will replace prop two and this bill was signed by governor gay <laughs> gay <laughs> gary hebert and basically what it does is it completely takes a bunch of really good stuff out of the actual legislation the voters of utah voted mm. for and replaces it with a much shittier bill wow imagine that the yeah. people getting fucked once again right so <laughs> Their in their medical uh, cannabis program isn't supposed to be set up until 2020, but here's what's interesting about it is is a lot of people are pointing um, a lot of the groups and initiatives that were trying to get this prop two and medicinal marijuana pass are are pointing to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints or the Mormon Church as being, you know, interfering with the politics in Utah to a point that is unconstitutional. And to a point that these groups are going to have filed a yeah. lawsuit against oh, the state good. Good. and not allowing say. them because the Mormons do not want medical marijuana to pass. Yeah. Obviously, they don't want that. They don't. They don't. You can't I mean, drink. You can't smoke. You like, can't even drink soda with caffeine in it. Yeah. As a Mormon. Yeah, it's vi it's very the rules strict. are strict. <laughs> it's very strict. Mormon life is very strict. But they ba what they basically did is. In every other state, medical uh, medical cannabis it allow once that is passed, it allows dispensaries and things like that to open up. But in Utah, they're taking a different approach. That the governor, of course, is like, "This is going to be the best medical marijuana program in the country." Yeah, right. What they're doing is they're going to make it all state run. It's going to be run by um, the actual state of Utah. And what the new bill does is it significantly reduces the number of private medical marijuana outlets compared to the original Prop 2. Bullshit. Which the original one would uh, permit up to 40 dispensaries. However, the replacement only allows seven so-called cannabis pharmacies. They're basically taking cannabis and trying to prescribe it and treat it like a prescription drug. And it's going to have to be done through a pharmacy. That's ridiculous. Look at that, that they're trying to get in on the, the market. They're like, it's not even that much of an issue of them wanting to block people from having it. That's part of it, too. Yeah. But it's also they want to get in on a little piece of this action. They the pharmacies are worried about that. Absolutely. Well, they absolutely want control over this. Plus, if you look into it, the Mormon church actually owns billions 
of bit like loads and loads of money in stocks in pharmaceutical companies you can go look it up there's a bunch of them Pfizer yeah. Johnson and Johnson all these big pharma companies the Mormons are heavily invested in yeah which the Mormon church has a fuckload of money by the way it's crazy mm-hmm they a lot also, of big churches have all churches have well, a yeah, fuck load of money. Not all churches, but a lot of churches. A lot of of the big mega, especially big mega churches. Big, yeah. but I mean, like the top, the head of like whatever religion at the top, there's money of every yeah, religion. Yeah, yeah, right. So, they also removed edibles. They're not going to allow you to have edibles except oh, for fuck. gelatin cubes. Oh, yummy! <laughs> this is where it gets really fucked up, though. They also removed uh, basically diagnoses, or is that the right word? Um, diagnosis. Things that you can be diagnosed for to get a medical marijuana license are removing most autoimmune diseases from that. So I wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to get it, yeah, except for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. That's ridiculous. So if you have any other type of autoimmune disease, that was a, in the original bill that they you voted through, in. but they pushed through this, this wow. replacement that removes all of that. That is such. Which is going to limit? How a ton did they do that? I don't understand how that's legal. So yeah, good thing they're well. They're filing a them. lawsuit, but I don't think anything's going to happen because, like, dude, I, I oh can't remember God. the exact figure, but there's some. It's either like sixty to eighty, somewhere in there, percent of politicians in Utah are a part of the Mormon Church. The Mormon Church is literally yeah. there's no separation intertwined. Yeah. yeah, there's no separation in church and yeah. state. So that's why they're filing the lawsuits because they're saying there should be yep. a separation. Why is the Mormon Church and have this much? What has been voted on should be carried out. Yeah, it should be a new vote then. Yeah, exactly. The people should vote, not just a bunch of politicians that vote yeah, for a replacement. Get, yeah, they're like, uh, yeah, we don't like what you guys came up with, so we're gonna redo it all ourselves, and you get no say. Like, what in what world? I don't understand how they can even do that. That's bullshit. Here, listen to this. They're also they're they're going to allow marijuana flour to be sold, but only in one gram increments, which must be purchased in blister packs. What the fuck's a blister pack? Like a little tin pack that you have to pop out stuff oh, for like pills things. and stuff. They're literally going to take a, like a gram and put them in little packs like that. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. So. They're ba they're literally taking they're it and it making it shitty. into a pharmaceutical is what they're yeah. doing. Yeah, Bullshit. and that's the worry. That's the whole worry with the whole cannabis industry. If it does get legalized yeah. federally, what's going to stop all these big pharma companies yeah. from or the government from just yeah? I mean, it the companies are the ones that are more powerful. They're going to go yeah. and and actually start their own cannabis. I mean, it's true. And then all these little private dispensaries, what are they going to do? How are they going to compete with Pfizer anything. and Johnson & Johnson and all these other companies? Yeah, they're huge and they're horrible. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. But if you live in Utah and yeah, you, you need uh, medicinal marijuana, you're in, in tough shape unless you yeah. meet all these certain criteria. So That's terrible. I still don't have a med card. I need to get one. I yeah. just always like, since it's been legal here, like I... You know, just buy it. But like, I should have a med card. That doesn't make any sense because it's like a lot more affordable if you have yeah, a med card. Yeah, which yeah, and if you I don't actually know. use it medically. So yeah, so like recreationals got a pretty. I mean, it's not super super expensive, but it is definitely way more expensive than medicinal is. Like, if you have a a medicinal license in uh, California, Colorado, you can get it for really cheap. Actually, like yeah, any type of uh, marijuana product. So I don't know. I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. So my next thing that I wanted to bring up was about George H.W. Bush. We talked, I know we talked about it last week, but I just found some out some other interesting things about this past week and what transpired. Mm -hmm. Because if you didn't know, George H.W. Bush died on November 30th. And yeah, I know I missed three episodes of Ellen because they filmed. And it, literally they had his stuff on TV every day. Yeah. Overall regular programming and it was just like I mean I understand like airing his funeral and that should be but like it was just they would cut into it to just film his plane with no sound just his plane coming in and then they would cut in again and just have his car driving away and everyone watching it's like why are why do I have to see this why is this being like interrupting programs okay I'm trying to watch Ellen okay it's it's 12 days of giveaways <laughs> seriously <laughs> Seriously though, I mean, I, that's how it I, that's weird. how I feel too. I mean, sure, you want to televise his funeral and burial—that's yeah. fine, whatever. 
but yeah, he's president. Once, but the you know? the the mainstream media they love events like this because they can literally just cover it around the clock, like and just mm -hmm. repeat the same headlines over and over and over yep. again. Now this will, if you live in the U.S., this will this will really uh, make your wallet hurt for a minute because, according, <laughs> yeah, your wallet, according to estimates. The paid holiday for federal workers alone, which they all had the day off, I think, on Wednesday or Thursday, maybe. Why? Because of George W. Bush's death. Oh, yeah. You get the day off. Yeah, they made an. They made, took the day off. Oh wow! Including Congress, the post office took the day off. Costed taxpayers an estimated half a billion dollars. Wow. Half a billion dollars to basically shut it all down, to celebrate, I guess, m you know, memorial memorial lies yeah oh my gosh that's a lot of fucking money and that that just that's just shutting that down for the day but that doesn't include them all the militaristic displays flyover security mm -hmm. operating air force one at two hundred thousand dollars an hour yeah secret service for all of the high profile political attendees oh my God. and all the police that had to be there oh my gosh yeah that's crit. That's and it went just on for crit. days, though. It was like five days of stuff. Wasn't but do you it? realize I mean, I that sure, our tax a long time. tax dollars yeah, go to that. that? Oh yeah, we pay for so much bullshit. We pay for security, oh, Air Force One for like tons of fucking people. Trump didn't he like take a fucking like a plane or I guess he took a car or a limo. Like the limo, I don't know exactly how long it was, but the distance that he was taking the limo was like two times was like three times the distance like the length of the limo. So he literally <laughs> got in it and it like moved, moved a little bit more and then he got out. Yeah. And you know how expensive it is? It's crazy. Oh, it's yeah. like, it's just how much it costs to like run presidential shit is mind blowing. But the fucked up thing about it for me is like they, they will dump like without even batting an eye, all this money into a memorial service for quite frankly, uh, a president that was not all that great. Did a lot of, was yeah. responsible for we a lot of terrible events did, that occurred. You don't know what the Bush family got into then. Yeah, go watch our podcast. Look at yeah. the the Nazi connection. Anyway. Oh, dropping that. Ooh, if you don't know about that, you should probably look into but there that. There is a major one. There it's is. It's not bullshit. It's real. Yes. Documented. Documented. But they, they'll pour 500, half a billion dollars yeah. into one day. But yet yeah. Flint, Michigan can't get fucking clean water. That's such what the fuck? They a won't disgrace. fix their water system. Rip out the pipes and pay for everybody to get new pipage and... Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, it's so ridiculous. Unless you're like an elite person mm -hmm. in the government or, you know, in their circles. Nothing's fair in the government. <laughs> you're screwed. I mean, you're in a you're in a you're on your own. So I don't know. I just thought that it's was terrible. We have like no values. <sighs> just I don't know. It hurts me to to hear that much money was spent for for me this too. guy. Oh my God. Well, I mean. He was president, but. Yeah. But what it's, I, I it's mean, way over the top. It's so over the top. I mean, but he should have still had like a funeral and everything. But like the cost of it all, it's just crazy. It's I, it, you would think that they would find a better way to do it. Yeah. Or like, just, yeah, I don't know why everyone had to have the day off. But it's it's almost this antiquated thing, right? This whole parade and, I, and all the military yeah. and stuff yeah. like there's all this like tradition surrounding it. And it's like. Well, and what I kept saying to Josh when we were watching some of it on TV is like, isn't it weird that like when you're dead and going through all this, you don't even know? Like all this stuff is happening for you, but you're gone. You don't know. Unless you can like see it from heaven and like remote view or something or from wherever you go. But like, but then who it's cares? all for the people that are still here. It's all for us. Like mm -hmm. George Bush doesn't know about any of this. Probably not. And all this money spent on him and he doesn't even know. It's just bizarre to me. It's Funerals are bizarre. so weird. Like how how humans over time have like dealt with death and our traditions behind death going back thousands and thousands of years. It's just fascinating. Like handling dead bodies and burial process and it's just really I, I honestly find it interesting that we still like put bodies in caskets and, and in bury the them into the ground I still. I keep thinking that too. Like, aren't we gonna run out of room? Yeah, it's like aren't all the cemeteries filling up? Cause Yeah. Yeah. I don't of, want that. I do not want to be put in a box. I, that freaks me out. Like, I want to be cremated, I think, and like spread into the ocean. I like that idea. Well, it's like, or just like throw me off a cliff into the <laughs> ocean. That one cliff in Hawaii, that was pretty nice. Throw me off the waterfall. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just put throw me, me in a little boat off. and sail me down the river like Lord of the Rings. Both of like, us. They could put both of us in a boat and like side sail by us side. off a waterfall. Yeah. God, that's romantic. Write that in our <laughs> will, Holding please. hands. <laughs> <laughs> sail off we'll make sure the... our kids get that done. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. Just save. If one of us dies first, just save us. Just save them in the freezer until the other one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. Getting a little morbid here. <laughs> All right. Before we talk about our next story, let's talk to these folks real quick about our first sponsor today, and that is Ooh, Bespoke Post. Yes. They have got, cool. they, we got a box from them to try that is very, very cool. There yes. is a little USB oil diffuser that Kendall's going to set up. I'm so excited. She I love subscription boxes and I love like holistic su subscription boxes. So this is like themed holistic for me and it's awesome. And this morning or what was it like a day ago, I was thinking about how we really need an oil diffuser in the podcast studio so I can like um, diffuse some really uh, fo good focusing blends. So they actually sent a peppermint oil. This little diffuser plugs into the laptop, like into a USB. Kendall is like, you could take it to class and yeah. piss everybody off. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, Don't that'd do be that. savage. Don't <laughs> yeah. do that. Some people could be allergic. But um, yeah, this is so cool. Oh, that's a nice size bottle too. 15 milliliter peppermint oil. So we got, yeah, she said we got this box called Unplug and it had peppermint oil, the diffuser. It had turmeric in it, a turmeric uh, powder powder for your warm beverages. It's like an aptogenic pow powder, if you're familiar with that. Yeah. It's good for your gut and skin health. Mm -hmm. And it also came with a bath bomb and cashmere socks. So that's pretty sweet. But Bespoke Post is also great for men. Let me tell you why. So when you're constantly on the go, grinding away at the office or hanging out with friends, there's not much time to think about upgrading your style or apartment. apartment. That's why we love getting a new box of awesome from Bespoke Post every month. These guys are out scouting for quality and unique products to send in each box. And now you can experience it too at boxofawesome.com. Mm. And for guys out there, there's a lot of, they're they're primarily focused on men, but they do have boxes for women, obviously, like we, we just showed you guys, but they have really cool things for guys. It's like little knickknacks and gadgets and like, you know, pocket knives and cool, like, um, different types of flannels and things like that. It's very like, I don't know, kind of earthy and like, it's cool. It's got really cool, unique items that they send you every month and you fill out a little quiz so fun with things them. that you like. I love subscription boxes too, too. And I'm glad there's more out there for men. So definitely check out boxofawesome.com. All you got to do to get started is visit awesome box <laughs> boxofawesome.com and answer a few short questions that will help them get the feel for the boxes that will best go with your style. Whether you're in the search of a perfect drink, a well-kept pad, or jet setting in style, Bespoke Post improves your life one box at a time. Each box goes for under 50 bucks, but has more than $70 worth of unique gear waiting inside for you. The first of each month, you'll receive an email with your box details. You have five days to change colors and sizes or add extra goods to your oh, box. that's cool. That's that is unique. cool. I've not seen that. And then if you're not feeling that month's box, you can simply skip it. Oh, that's hella cool. And and like I said, tons of cool shit for guys like barrel aging kits to limited edition cigars, weekender bags to classy dop kits. Bespoke Post offers essential goods and guidance for the modern man. To receive 20% off your subscription box, go to boxofawesome.com and enter code MileHire at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code MileHire for 20% off your first box. Word. Dude, this is like a great one for traveling. I'm going to bring this with us. Yeah, too. that's sweet. We're going to Asheville, North Carolina this week to visit friends. That's really sweet. I'm going to bring it with it us. smells good. It does. It smells really good. All right. Here's here's something I wanted to talk about that uh, I saw this week, and that is about I wanna lab start. I'm gonna start. meat. No. no, no, no. This is my last oh, news story. Uh, okay. We're not in the ponder session. No, not yet. Okay. Oh, well, I want to start down. the ponder session because I made can. like an intro thing. Okay, Kendall. We got you. <laughs> okay, we Josh. got you. <laughs> All right, lab-grown meat. This is very interesting, and I think, obviously, you know, we've talked about climate change and everything like that and how, you know, mm -hmm. factory farming, all that contributes to it. But the good news is that lab-grown meat is on the way and perhaps could literally save humanity Yeah. by having, you know, if we were able to switch from, you know, real meat and beef to lab-grown meat. And beef's like the biggest issue for sure. So beef would be like the biggest thing to make a difference in it. 
Yeah, exactly. It it will shock you how much that cows and and it's beef horrible. contribute to producing methane, which is way more um, toxic to the atmosphere, mm. even more so than carbon dioxide. Yeah, so I completely gave up red meat for the last year, and I just get grossed out if I even like try to eat it now, and just ugh, I just can't do it. I yeah, know too much. Yeah, and I mean I I love. I love beef. I'm not going to lie, but I have tried to. You've cut you know, way back cut on way back on it and try to yeah. do like once a week, twice Ever a week. Ever since I cut beef and pork, you actually, cut it's more that. like once a week for me at this Majorly. point. Majorly. Yeah. Cause we, we really stick to like either vegetarian or fish, sometimes turkey or chicken, but that's even pretty rare. Yeah. So switching to only lab grown meat has shown that it could cut emissions from conventionally produced meat by up to 96%. And cut down on land use required for meat production by 99%. So the thing about it is it's been extremely expensive to produce, but they've got it down to $11 a pound, I think. Wow. Uh, could you imagine like what a difference that would make? God, I wonder if it would taste good. I wonder if I'd right want to eat it. Yeah, right now. It sounds kind of nasty to me. Right now, the thing about it is it's lacking the like juiciness that real meat has. You know, like if you yeah, had a lab, no point. if you, it's kind of like a dry protein Ew. thing. So they're Ew. trying to figure out how to get the like it's juices. It's like steak right now. It's like overcooked, well done steak. Yeah, it's like, Point it's just kind of dry. Yeah, like a protein taste. I don't know. It's not as good as it could be. But the good news is that they're very, very close to getting it to a point. It's already affordable now. They've gotten the price down. They just got to get the taste down and the consistency down. Well, if they can do that, I think a lot more people would be open to the conversation because right now a lot of people, I mean, this is their lifestyle. Like they've grown up eating this. This, you know, there's it's in their culture, it's in their family traditions. Like, and it's cheap, dude. A lot mm -hmm. of ground beef is very cheap. A lot of people like the, can't afford to be vegan or, right. you know, to cut this stuff out. So if this was an alternative and it tasted good and people, people would be way more open to the idea of switching, you know? So I would 100% would really switch cool. to lab grown meat. I don't know if I would eat it because it sounds a little fucking gross. But if it, Maybe if they get it better, I'll if try it's it. it's indistinguishable from real meat, would you do it? I don't know because I don't even like real beef now. When I have it, I just get grossed out. Well, so, maybe not you, but I would enjoy it. I know you would probably <laughs> enjoy it. I would give it a try for sure. Maybe if it had some like good garlic butter on it or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But I just thought that was interesting because that's very interesting. That, it, that could literally revolutionize the world. And, you know, yeah, if they did that, if they help, you us. know, move forward with that and they move forward with the, um, you know, fuel alternatives. Those are the two things that could literally save our asses. Yeah. I'd say those are the two most important. Yeah, things. absolutely. Absolutely. So I hope they I hope they get it, get it right and get it. Tasting like a get it right, get it tight. A real McDonald's Big <laughs> so, Mac. Like that's what you were gonna say. Get it right, get <laughs> no. it right, get it tight. Now you have that song stuck in my head. All right, you want to hit us? With, all right, let's oh, let's I'm get ready. into it. I'm what's ready. your what's your first thing over well, here? Well, okay. So I thought for my first session here, I would just hit you guys with some interesting facts. So I have like five or so interesting facts that I found that just blew my mind. Okay, so here's one. Cleopatra technically lived closer in time to the moon landing than she did to the building of the Great Pyramids. <laughs> That's so funny, dude. I have that exact same fact. Do you? <laughs> oh, my I God, I have that Josh. exact same fact because I saw that and I was like, ooh, that's interesting. I want to. I want to talk about that. Oh my gosh! Well, that's what I was. Yeah. Talk about. No, no, no. That's that's. I'm glad you glad you found You're that. Not too. just like pulling up articles. You're actually doing your own. Are you? No, no, no. Doing I, your notes? No, I have stuff. Okay, I, good, that, I, I just, have my own notes here. I don't want you copying like BuzzFeed. So or something. Cleopatra is closer to the moon landing to basically modern civilization than it is to the pyramids. Yeah, which is so fascinating because like I think people like if you don't know much about Egypt, you kind of just think it's all together. It was all the same. Yeah, like, she yeah. was there and, the you know, no, thousands. It's really it's like, amazing how long Egyptians were around. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. Years and years and years and years that. <sighs> Their it civilization be such went on. a priority to be, you know, looking for artifacts, and but they don't want us to know. They don't want us to know. They are looking for artifacts. They're uncovering artifacts No, I know, but it should be a bigger priority. It should be more governments involved. The whole world should be involved in, like, in studying Egypt. ancient Egyptians yeah, and trying to it's our decipher everything. Past. Like, yeah, I think they probably knew some important shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So that's oh, what yeah. I'm saying. I mean, I they, obviously know. there's people doing it, but they don't have as much funding as they'd probably like to imagine yeah. what they could do. Like they could, there's stuff that they could do with the Sphinx. They could open the Sphinx if they had enough funding, but they don't. 
and they or, don't have government or support. Technology. I don't know if they'd open it up because no, just... they there's a lot of archaeologists that want to do that because there's like so many, there's so many like um, people that have said that there's like psychics that have said there's something with this yeah, sphinx. There's I've heard that too. Yeah, there's like things written down that the sphinx is really important. So there are groups that want to open it, but they can't get government support. Yeah, and isn't it older than the pyramids too? Like yes, the sphinx is like old as shit like well they think it's been re it was redone at one point but at first they think it was a sub-saharan african face so that's how far it goes back sub-saharan africa god and why why did they build that i don't know but it was clearly important there's probably yeah, something in it important. and multiple psychics multiple mystics like it would make sense whatever they you want to call them have there. said that there's something very important in there and then there was something recently that they found like I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. I think we talked about it. Like there was something that they found recently that said to open it. And they were like thinking, I, don't hmm. know. I thought I talked about it last year. Now it's making my head hurt. I don't remember. But I, all I know is it'd be cooler. It'd just be cool if people took it more seriously, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I 100% agree. But yeah, Cleopatra, closer to us than the pyramids. Wow. Yeah truly weird the perception of time is just fucking mind-boggling like, oh i know when you start thinking about like the timeline of human civilization going all the way back to like the ancient sumerians to now like thousands of years have gone by well, when your life so only much 100 has years it's like hard to even yeah understand like, what time is bigger than that you know and modern like modern age modern civilization is so small in comparison to all of these other ancient civilizations so i don't know yeah. it's really interesting what else you got what other facts you got to okay. bust my mind so <laughs> sorry my, my what are you dog, doing she just wants to be on here so bad <laughs> okay i don't want her to breathe this in. um that doesn't have anything toxic in it but still come over here okay so if there are 23 people in a room did you know that there is a 50 percent chance that two of them share the same birthday Wait, if there's 23 people in a room, 50% chance that at least one shares a at birthday? At least two share the same birthday. Oh, at least two people do? Yeah, well, duh. One person shares it with themselves. That's the odds that. Yeah, it's called the birthday paradox. What? It was so hard. I tried to take notes on this so I could explain it to you guys, but unfortunately, my little <laughs> brain could not comprehend did you this. Say, did you just say I was so high? Is that what you just said? No. It sounded like you just said I was so high and then you. No. I don't know. Sorry. I didn't say I was I'm so imagining high. things. I was just researching like normal. And yeah, it's called the birthday paradox. So you can look it up if you want to understand why. But basically, the chances of like, because a lot of people think, well, if I was in a room with 23 people, what are the chances that someone else would have the same birthday as me? But it's not just if they have the same one as you. It's if anyone in there has the same it's like a real thing. Oh, I got you. It's I a got paradox. You. Like it's a complete thing. There's people that have complete lectures on it and stuff. It's totally interesting. Hmm. So I just thought that was an interesting fact. Yeah, so. that is interesting. <laughs> okay. So here's another one. There are more ways to shuffle a deck of cards than there are atoms in our solar system. The fuck? I know. I was mind blown. How does that, how many cards are in a deck? Like 50? 52. Well, what? Yeah, I'm confused. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I know. <laughs> a deck of cards shuffled yeah. is more than the the solar system has atoms? Yeah. That's craziness. Yeah, there really are. Look, there's multiple articles on it. Well, that's that's just ridiculous. I I just can't believe that. That's just That's kind of hard to be like, how did anyone figure that out? Yeah. But yeah, apparently I mean, mathematically, more ways to... I, I guess if you look at mm -hmm. how many combinations, if you calculated mm -hmm. how many combinations, mm -hmm. It's probably some ridiculous number because, mm -hmm. I mean, if you have, yeah, but yeah. The, it, the fact that it equals the number of atoms in, in the solar system is very weird. Yes. Um, here's another one. So a day on Venus lasts longer than a year on Venus. Wait, what? A day on Venus lasts longer than a year. And here's the explanation. It takes the Earth... 243 days to rotate once on its axis, which is called a side rail day. The planet's orbit around the sun takes 225 Earth days compared to the Earth's 365. So Venus's. Hmm. 
A day on the surface of Venus, a solar day, takes 117 Earth days. A full day on Venus. Wow. <laughs> I know. I'm like so confused. That's crazy. See, all these little facts that I got, it's very hard for me to like explain any of them. So I'm just bringing <laughs> them to you guys. <laughs> so you're just bringing them to us just to make mm -hmm. our heads hurt. So mm -hmm. thank you. Isn't that interesting though? Yeah. And I looked it up and like multiple scientists confirm it and stuff. Yeah. Huh. It's pretty interesting. Okay. And here's my last one. So there's actually copyright laws protecting the Eiffel Tower. You cannot take a photo of the Eiffel Tower at night. It is illegal technically and is subject to copyright law. In France? Yeah. Yeah. Where the Eiffel Tower is. Well, I kind of get that because I don't think you're allowed to do that like with the Statue of Liberty. You can't take a picture of the Statue of Liberty? Uh, I mm. think you can. Mm, I think you can. Pretty sure you can. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure people don't follow this law either. I was gonna I know say, the Kardashians how, take pictures drones of it. out of the air and stuff. Like, <laughs> no, but it's technically illegal because it's a piece of art. So you, you're technically like taking a picture of someone's art. It's like the same as like going into uh, an art museum and taking a picture of someone's right, art. Right, right, and then like posting so. it or trying to resell it or something. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? interesting. Yeah. So those are my facts. Interesting. Those are my little facts. Thank you, Teacher Kendall. Uh, yeah, for... I couldn't really explain them all, but <laughs> I tried my best. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Because we are going to talk about something that is extremely interesting and extremely baffling as to why the hell this even exists. Have you heard of America Stonehenge? No. Good. Because I'm about to school you to the Georgia Guidestones. But before we do that, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's episode. If you don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 20,000 classes in design, photo, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Skillshare believes in accessible learning, and the pr price reflects that. An annual subscription with unlimited access is less than $10 a month, making it one of the best deals you can find for online education. And since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, the first 500 people to use the promo link in the description will get their first two months free to try it out, risk-free. Skillshare is very cool. There's tons of good stuff. Whether you want to learn about Photoshop, want to, want to learn about drones, you want to learn about, um, there's all sorts of things on there, mm -hmm. uh, hobbies and such that you can try out for two months for free with no risk at all. Yep. The first 500 people to sign up will receive the two month free trial. All you got to do is go to skl.sh slash milehire7 to start your trial now. Jump on it because those do fill up. Yes. All right, the Georgia Guidestones. Can't believe you've never heard of this. Mm. All right, so these are the Georgia Guidestones. They're located in Elbert County, Georgia, approximately 90 miles east of Atlanta and nine miles north of the center of Elberton. The monument is situated on a rise on a, sh a short distance to the east of Georgia Highway 77 and is visible from that road. Small signs beside the highway indicate the turnoff for the Guidestones. The Georgia Guidestones are a huge granite monument located on a hilltop in Elbert County, Georgia. It's also, also often referred to as America's Stonehenge. A message comprised of 10 guides or commands, commandments is inscribed on the monument in eight modern languages and a shorter message is inscribed at the top of the structure. The monument is almost 20 feet high, made from six granite slabs that weigh more than 100 tons, 100 tons. Wow. Yeah, these are these are extremely big. Like like I said, American Stonehenge, literally. One slab stands in the center while four arranged are around it. A capstone lies on the top of the five slabs, which are astronom uh, astronomically aligned, which I'll explain what? more about in a minute. Yeah. How have we not heard of this? There's an additional stone tablet which is set on a ground set on the ground a short distance to the west of the monument, which provides some clarifying notes on the monument's history and its purpose. So yeah. when talking about this monument being astronomically aligned, the stones are placed so that a slit at eye level in the central upright slab permits an observer to view the what eastern horizon and lines with the position of the rising oh sun at the God. summer and winter solstices. So it is like it's so, literally Oh my gosh, like it's like Stonehenge. Through wow. the center stone from south to north, a two inch diameter hole is inclined at an angle of 34 degrees and points to the north celestial pole. A beam of sunlight passing through a hole in the capstone forms a spot of light below. 
the position of the spot can be used to determine high noon and the day of the year. Wow. So this thing is sweet, honestly. Wow. And they don't know when it was built or who built it. Here's here's the history on it. This, oh, this okay. is interesting. So the story behind the guidestones is extremely mysterious, just as the monuments are themselves. And in June 1979, a well-dressed articulate man walked into the office of Elberton Granite Company in Elberton, Georgia, and said that he wanted to know the cost of building a large monument to the conservation of humanity. He identified himself as Mr. R.C. Christian and said that he represented a small group of Americans who wished to remain anonymous. Whoa. Interesting. So the president of this granite company was skeptical of undertaking a project of this magnitude and very skeptic skeptical of the stranger in his office. He asked Mr. Christian to speak to the company's banker, Mr. Wyatt Martin, thinking that would be the last he saw of him. However, Mr. Christian went to the bank and explained to Mr. Martin that although his name was a pseudonym with a symbolic meaning, he and the group he represented were very serious about erecting these guidestones for, quote unquote, the conservation of the world and to herald the coming age of reason. Should there be a Holocaust in the civilized world, the group wished the guidestones to be one of the most enduring things to help humanity start anew. Oh my God, that's fucking crazy. Isn't it? Yeah, how have we never heard of this? Yeah, what? isn't it interesting? I mean, yeah. I was like, what it makes the? me think it's like the same group <laughs> that's like trying that maybe it was like just starting out at that point. Like, what is it called? The resistance? The what is it called? Oh, like the alliance or what? Alliance is yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, there's like supposedly a group that's like fighting back. There could be like an alliance. Well, here's wow. okay <laughs> because this is obviously going to start like raising questions, and you start thinking about well, what about. What's going on at DIA, the Denver airport with their, yeah. you know, sort of, you know, Which. new world order type shit. You know, that's basically what this, what the conspiracy uh, is surrounding the Holocaust. These. That's fucking freaky. Well, it it's playing into the whole idea of the new world order and how they would want to reduce the human population on the planet. Mm. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. But let me let me continue because it gets even more interesting. So Mr. Martin agreed to handle the funds, and after an escrow account was set up, work began on the monument. Skilled workers quarried and cut the blocks. Others sandblasted the message in four-inch high letters, and still others hauled them to a hillside seven miles north of Elberton, where they would astronomically I keep saying that word wrong, astronomically aligned with the North Celestial Pole, the noonday sun, and the rising and setting points of the sun and moon on the horizon, which how do you even do that? How do they even do that with big stones like that? The fact that they get them lined up and they like, how do they measure that? And I don't know. They just must the, know something. Just the like astronomy that goes into that is, is yeah, pretty, pretty impressive. Fucking intense. So a year after the completion of the Georgia Guidestones, the final correspondence arrived in Elberton from R.C. Christian and the group responsible for the Guidestones. So far, no one knows who this mysterious group is or why they felt compelled to erect the Georgia Guidestones and its message for mankind. Mm -hmm. The true identity of R.C. Christensen, the anonymous head of the supposed like-minded individuals, has never been revealed and is purported to only be known by the owner of the quarry where the granite was taken from and built, as well as the banker who made the transaction. Holy shit, that's fucking wild. Isn't it? I mean, obviously you're not doing it for attention or lying or anything, because if you don't even take credit for it, they literally did it for humanity. Well, he used like a pseudo name. He literally used a pseudo, yeah. like, and I, I doubt the, the banker in that. I bet he somehow, maybe, I don't know, maybe he revealed his real identity to him. So, so skeptics would say that this is just a rich, did you put the dock on the ground? That was a bad idea. <laughs> she keeps trying to get out of my Okay, lap. just keep her in the chair. Sorry, guys. Sadie's fighting, ruthlessly fighting with Bernie right now. <laughs> if you can hear the growling in the background. But, so the skeptics say that this individual that erected these guidestones was likely just a rich guy from Georgia or wherever he was from who was into new age type things and just decided out of nowhere to create these massive, probably super expensive granite monuments, basically American Stonehenge in Georgia. Like, 
what the hell? Why would anybody do that if there wasn't some bigger type of thing behind it, right? Right. There must have been a serious purpose to this. I mean, was it just to be like a unifying message of like just bring everybody together? Like he's just being nice? Yeah. I don't think so. I mean, they clearly knew some woke shit if they knew how to like, they like obviously know about Stonehenge and the whole idea yeah. of the solstices and everything. So. Well, there's been a lot of people and obviously that are interested in this and, and investigating it and trying to figure out what's going on with it. And people have said that um, this monument is a type of occult um, monument. It's a type of monument that goes back to there's a several different cults out there that may have been responsible for it or a secret society dating back even as far back as the 15th century. Some like. There's a lot of really weird things or that it's some type of satanic type uh, monument, which I'll read what it actually says that you can actually see what it says. And it's I don't know. I don't know how you get satanic from it, but there's a lot of theories about it. Nobody knows huh. why. Why is this here? Who? Why would they do this? For you what should, purpose? Like, go there and see it. Oh, I know. I'm like, God, that sounds really interesting. I had no idea that was there. So the message on the guidestones consists of a set of 10 guidelines or principles that are engraved on the actual stones themselves in eight different languages. One language on each of the faces of the four large upright stones. There's English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindu, Hebrew, Arabic, Chinese, and Russian. They want as many people to be able to read it as possible. So those are, if you look at those a little bit deeper, obviously English, Spanish, Chinese, that's a big amount of people yeah. right there. Arabic too. Wow. God, so, that's so fascinating. I wonder if it really, really is a know message something. for humanity then. Do you think anything's going to happen? Well, that's the thing. Skeptics are just like, oh, this is just some like nutty thing. Okay, sure. But why? Why the fuck would someone do this? With this, why? To Skeptics are like, there's a lot of people that just want to fuck with other people. So they do shit like mm. this to just Got like it. skeptics say about the Denver airport that like, oh, all that like, you know conspiracy shit's stupid and fake and you know laugh at it because they're like that's ridiculous that can never happen but with this i don't know all right let me read the message so you tell me what you think the message in english reads maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature that's the first fucking line Ma wait can you read it? Maintain, maintain humanity so people under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature what does that say to you maintain humanity under five under a number that's really creepy five million or five billion five hundred million five hundred million we got a lot more than that oh yeah we got almost so why eight is bill it saying here. to maintain it below that amount what does that number symbolize what does that mean i don't know are you asking me <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i'm i'm blowing your mind but what what do you think that means I don't, I don't know what do you think it means i already said it i don't know it seems like it feeds into the conspiracy to me that there's five hundred thousand people only gonna be that allowed if, dude you never know man that's a lot less than there is right now that's a that, lot i don't even know how you pull that off like how do you yeah, pull that off that's, that's crazy weird. this was cool until that all right here we go but it may not mean that at all so huh. that's what you got to keep in mind that that may have been completely way off it also says guide reproduction wisely, improving fitness and diversity. Unite humanity with a living new language. One language. Yeah. So this sounds guide like guide reproduction wisely. What the fuck does that mean? Like don't like go crazy with it and don't have like 25 keep, kids. Keep the population at 500 mil or what? So do these people like have some type of way of knowing that the population is going to go down to 500 mil? I don't know, man. It seems like it. If this what is true, I, if this is anywhere, shape or form. These true. seems like directions for becoming a type one civilization. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> what? Kardashev scale. Reducing the population yeah. in order to get to a type one. Learning one okay. new language. That's one of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying is like, it's not all ridiculous. Like a new, mm -hmm. maybe well, it could be a unity it. type thing. Like everybody needs to come together. You need to learn a yeah. new language, rule, passion, faith, tradition, and other things with tempered reason, protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. That seems like 
good stuff. Fucking basic. Yeah. Let all nations rule internally resolving external disputes in a world court. What? So instead of com- countries going to war with each other, go to you go to a world court and you fight it out. Like oh my God, that's Russia so versus smart. the U.S. God, the like if it, we were talking about this past year. God, we should just restart with all these rules. All right. So sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> avoid petty laws and useless officials i'm 100 percent down with that no useless officials yeah i agree balance personal rights with social duties Interesting. prize truth beauty love seeking harmony with the infinite be mm-hmm. not a cancer on the earth leave room for nature leave room for nature repeats it twice balance personal rights with social duties a shorter message appears on the four vertical surfaces of the capstone, again in a different language and script on each face. The explanatory tablet near the guidestones identifies these languages or scripts as Babylonian cuneiform, classical Greek, Sanskrit, and Egyptian hieroglyphics, and they're all on separate tablets that face different directions, north, east, south, and west. Wow, that's fascinating. And what it translates I can't believe to I've never is, heard of this. let these guidestones, uh, let these be guidestones to an age of reason. Wow. That's the message of the guidestones, that sentence right there. Let these guidestones, or let these be guidestones to an age of reason. Wow, that's fascinating. So it's almost like here's, maybe it's somebody's idea of how you like, yeah, get, humanity back on track or, or get, civilization become a type one civilization yeah, or type one maybe to it's just an... bring us up to the next level <laughs> this is going to sound whack but but maybe it was aliens and they decided to I'm create saying. create some type of yeah because if you think about it you go back to stonehenge and you think about the crop circles yes. there's de- there's definitely seems like there might be well, something extraterrestrial to all there's that. a lot of theories that think aliens made stonehenge pyramid all these like types of things to guide humans so this is but like can they make a bigger one like we get this though <laughs> Why not put that We need in, it like, bigger. We need to see this shit. People yeah. are way too obsessed with themselves to see this tiny little thing. Yeah. This sh- why isn't it as big as like a pyramid? Stonehenge or a pyramid. Apparently, I yeah. mean, if the aliens did it, they're on a tight budget or something. Yeah. I don't know. But that's fascinating to think about, like aliens coming down and like setting up isn't a little it? guide for us. I feel like they're smarter than that, though. They would do something better. They're like, they're these dumbasses are not going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> they're just going to look at it and wonder about it for a million. And then blame like, it on yeah. a conspiracy that it's yeah, a hoax. But, yeah. They'll blame it on this like fake new world order that exists. And <laughs> that is fascinating. I did not know that. Yeah, the Georgia Guidestones. So yeah, people think it's conspiracy theorists believe, including Alex Jones believes it's literally the blueprints for the new world order. Interesting. But from a flip percent, uh, flip perspective, flip why percentage. would they just like put these out there like in the middle of nowhere where everybody can see it and stuff. well they could be here so that they survive that they're made out of stone so that they survive some type of event, event or sure. anything and they're really not here for us right now they're here for humans in the future like what if we have to restart and there's they don't know what language people will speak so they put it in every language and they they're trying to you know somehow save or i don't know that's just i think probably wasn't for people right now it's probably for future humans interesting stuff though. yeah it really is i mean the georgia guidestones men we definitely i would definitely want to i can't believe i haven't seen them like yeah I I, i've never even heard of it all right yeah for me go to for talk it. About it shoot it back over to you all right so guys it is that time of year again when people are getting the flu people love to ask oh, josh and I about yeah. flu shots <laughs> And other vaccines. Um, so we definitely need to do like a full podcast on vaccines. And I mean, there's so much conspiracy when it comes to vaccines oh, and yeah. medical world oh, stuff. Yeah, so it's very controversial. Today we're <laughs> just talking about the flu shot. And this is very basic. Um, but it's starting to seem like they write a new story every couple of days about someone having a bad reaction to the flu vaccine. Like it's, it's so common. hundred percent dying. Pe- like it happens all the time. So recently, most recently there was a guy named Shane Morgan in Las Vegas and he had a highly adverse reaction to the vaccine itself. Really? No, I'm, I'm listening. Um, yeah, I have that 
Wait, that's what this is from, my notes. Oh. <laughs> Just stop, Josh. <laughs> You're such a Virgo. You're like, oh, I need to do my own research on your research. <laughs> stop. You're absolutely I already right. have the no, article no, no. you're looking no. up right now. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot that you, you had that, but... Um, no, I was just, I knew of another story, but it was a different one from the one that you found. Oh, okay. Well, we can read the one I found. All right. So Shane Morgan, <laughs> he is a Las Vegas resident that had a highly adverse reaction to the vaccine itself or contracted some strain of flu afterwards. It's very clear that him and his wife, um, have both had a re adverse reaction or they both think that it was some type of thing caused by the flu shot itself. Uh -huh. So basically on November 2nd, Shane and Monique, 31, who live in North Las Vegas and are new parents to eight-month-old Briar, got their flu shots. They were planning to see Shane's 23-year-old daughter, Sydney, and her four-month-old, and she requested that the whole family get a vaccine in order to protect her baby. They typically didn't get vaccinated, but they happily obliged. Is that the word obliged? Yeah. Mary J. Obliged. Sorry. <laughs> the only reason I took this was because I didn't want to lie to my daughter, Shane said. And then a few days after he fell ill, he got really weak, achy, had a fever and sore throat. By November 14th, he was asking his wife to take him to the hospital. And that's when things started to get really bad. His legs mm. and arms were going numb. And then once he was admitted to the hospital, he was sedated, intubated, unable to Damn. breathe on his own. God. Two weeks later now, he still can't walk. He's left with his eyes, with one of his eyes paralyzed and shut and tubes protruding, protruding from his neck. Jesus. So the doctors have made a diagnosis of Guillain-Barre syndrome. So this what? like started like as soon Gilligan? as he... Gilligan? Gillian Guillain-Barre oh, syndrome. Oh, Gillian. Sorry. Okay. Um, he may have had months of recovery left from this rare disease. This person, it's basically a disease where your nerves are attacked by your own immune system, causing for paralysis. And in, in extreme cases, death. Damn. The cause of the disease that affects one or two, one or two in a million isn't known, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. They don't fucking know. Yeah, they don't know. But the disease can creep up after a bout of diarrhea and respiratory infection. That's or, what it was. Yep. That's what they're saying. So it's some type of Campylobacter disease. J. Juni bacteria. Jesus. In rare cases, people come down with Gillian Barr syndrome after having the flu or getting a flu shot, though the CDC can't show a casual effect. Right. Well, they can't show shit. Yeah. They they can't show half the shit that they should know. Yeah. And there's I guess there's like a lot of different different proof about these vaccines causing Oh, causing yeah. things and oh, there's yeah. a lot of people that think they put certain diseases strains into certain people's flu shots and like test new diseases on them i mean the yeah, conspiracies yeah. are crazy oh, yeah. but some of them might be true because i mean this stuff this is crazy stuff that happens to people i haven't had a flu shot in years i have not gotten the flu at all i haven't had i used to get them at at work quite a bit because for some reason, my last job had like a flu shot person come into the office and vaccinate everybody. I was like, I think a lot of places. What do is that? this? Like, because well, companies figure like it'll prevent people from money, yeah. having to call out. <laughs> yeah. Dude, don't everybody calls out in flu season anyway, man. I know, like <laughs> whether they have it or not. If I get the flu, real. okay, but if not, I'm gonna pretend yeah, I have I mean, it. Anyway, everybody so. uses the flu. Like I'm sick. I got the flu. Cough, cough. I need to stay home. I thought know? I had the flu last year, but I ended up not actually having it. Gotta use those sick days, man. Okay, so the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that everyone age six months and up, including pregnant women, get an annual influenza vaccine. Ooh. The two fundamental assumptions underlying the CDC's policy are that the vac vaccination reduces the transmission of the virus and reduces the risk of pot potentially high deadly complications. Sorry, there was no high in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's called dyslexia, throwing a random word yeah. in. <laughs> Yet multiple reviews of the scientific literature have concluded that there is no good scientific evidence to support their claims. That so, does not surprise me in the least bit. It really doesn't. But here's what's really crazy is that so the CDC recently like gave out this report that said that since they've been giving out the flu shot um, that it's gotten better. Like the flu rates have gone down, but then they actually just released a report um, just like a separate company. Yeah. And Americans have significantly increased the amount of flu in older people 
from in their 80s and 90s. So, or no, since the 80s and 90s. Sorry. So basically, the vac- the as the vaccination re- rates have increased, the amount of people getting the flu has also yeah, increased. Yeah, I, I don't think there's enough evidence that shows that it 100% helps. Like, I, I they give you, like, I forget what the chance or the percentages are that it will help you versus what, you know, the adverse effects of it would be. I don't know. I just don't think it's worth it. Quite frankly, I mean, maybe if I worked with kids or, you know, obviously I wouldn't want to get the flu, but I don't know if I'm willing to just go get vaccinated. We we don't get um, it. So why would we? Yeah. Just to, to maybe say, oh, maybe, but I don't even know what they're putting in me. And I looked into this a little bit too. And, and in the past, they don't do this anymore. They've replaced the chemical, but they used to put a type of antifreeze in it and stuff too. Mm-hmm. Like the, the things, there's a lot of sketchy, the shit things the that they put in, they throw in there. It's like a concoction of different things. It's not just like yeah. one medicine. Like it's like five different things. And they're just like, Oh, we'll put these together and see if it works. And you know, hope it works. Cause how are they doing trials on this before they're just vaccinating everybody with this like made chemical, like they're vaccinating probably like rats and things like that. Yeah. They're testing it on animals before exactly. they're they don't it know and they don't know what long term effects and they don't know the amount like they don't do it on nearly the amount of people to know and the fillers and things yeah. they change those constantly mm-hmm. too mm-hmm. so every year i think so it changes a little it. bit even no i just i don't see the need i was reading this whole article because like i'm so curious about your guys's opinions on vaccinating your kids because like the more i learn about this stuff the more i want to be that parent who doesn't vaccinate their kids, who pulls their kids out of school, who just, you know, and I don't want to isolate my kids or be known as that like crazy mom. Yeah. But like the more I know, I, I want to protect them. The more them. you know, the more you're like, God, I don't want them out there. So I read this whole article about this, this guy who has not vaccinated his son. His son has had no like medications. He's complete, like right out the womb, just like nature, natural stuff. That's it. And he's like a beautiful, healthy boy. He's doing great. He's at age. He's at weight. He has no health conditions. So it's like, do you take the risk though? Because then there's stuff like polio. And I mean, I just don't know enough about it to make an educated decision. Like obviously for my own kids, thank God I don't have any and I don't have to decide right now. But like school to it a bit more. I definitely want to do a whole podcast on vaccinations. I've read so many things. And then the like whole autism link, that's yeah, a whole controversial yeah, thing. And, yeah. you know, I have someone with autism in my family, so it's always been something I've been kind of afraid to even look into, but I think I really need to know more about that. So I we just need to think, do a whole podcast I think the whole it. thing with it though, is that there's not enough, like enough quantity of data and evidence to show these things, that there's these links or connections. Mm-hmm. At least I could be wrong, but that is my assumption right now is that there's just not enough to you know definitively say there's a link or there's but there is very weird things happening for sure yeah where it's enough to like question question it absolutely absolutely awesome well did you want me to yeah talk about how i'm a starseed starseed oh yeah oh yeah you just wait you just wait oh you're a starseed yeah we're gonna talk Mm. about starseeds because this came up, I think, last episode when we talked about aliens. And I it's actually very interesting. And um, I think it explains a lot about us. I think we might both be starseeds. Oh, okay. But <laughs> before we talk about starseeds, I want to thank our last sponsor today, Burrow. The holiday season is here. And whether you're hosting the entire extended family or just a few friends, you'll need a cozy seat for everyone. There's no better time to replace your worn out hand-me-down couch with a super comfortable, high quality and stylish burrow sofa. Burrow. Have you heard of burrow? I actually no. heard of burrow uh, before they um, sponsored us, but it's it's actually very cool. It's very, I love all these um, very like new age millennial tech uh, companies that are like using technology and making it everything customizable. Yeah, and that's what's so great cool. about them is that you can customize your sofa online. You can pick you know, the style of it, whether you want low armrests or stylish high armrests, you don't have to go to any, <laughs> any dimly lit warehouse to get your <laughs> furniture like, like, uh, we have. <laughs> yeah. Shipping is fast and free and it's modular design, which means it ships in regular boxes, which is nice. So like there are pieces oh, that connect nice. together. Yeah. So, oh, so you, you can, to, like, it's not hard to set it up. No, it's like if you have a apartment or somewhere where it's, oh hard to get like big furniture in yeah you know it's kind of a pain when you buy from the warehouse whatever so yeah because you never know until it gets there yeah and yeah modular furniture is such a great invention 
but all of their furniture is handmade in North Carolina. It's all durable, sustainably sourced, which is important and easy to set up. The comfortable fabric is naturally scratch and stain resistant. It was actually one of time's best inventions of 2018. They're designed for cuff comfort. They include a USB charger, which is awesome. Uh, the foam is supportive and yet super cozy. And they have four unique collections. They have Bohemian, Industrial, Mid-Century Modern, or Rustic Farmhouse. So there's a lot of selection to, depending on what your style is. Buy them individually or save money with a professionally matched set. They're ethically manufactured with the fair trade and good weave certification. So you can get your living room ready right now for all of your holiday celebrations and save $75 on a new sofa by visiting bro.com slash mile hire. That's B U R R O W.com slash mile hire to get $75 off your order. Thanks again, bro for supporting the show for real. It's cool. So star seeds. I love this concept of star seeds. So if you don't know what a star seed is guys, star seeds are advanced beings that originate from far distant stars and galaxies whose mission is to assist earth into the golden age. It's interesting because there's like other names for the same type of concept. Like they there's also called a rainbow child. Yeah. There's totally different names for it. But the specific one same about thing. star seeds is that you're we're extra like you believe that we're extraterrestrial in origin. Well, I might be since I have Rh negative blood, but I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm a hybrid bitch. <laughs> I'm a half alien. Anyways, star seeds are highly evolved souls with an unfathomable amount of wisdom hibernating in their core. And though they may have come from a faraway galaxy light years away, sounds like Star Wars far, far away. They have found a new home living here on Earth. Star seeds experience a total amnesia as to their true identities. However, each is encoded with an activation switch. <laughs> each awakening is unique and can range from measured and calm to ab abrupt and intense. When activated, star seeds don't need to be told what they are. They inherently know. They recall their purpose on Earth and where they're from with no explanations needed. Well, how do how would we be one? Because we don't know. We didn't all of a sudden wake up and know where we came from. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I knew I came from my mama. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm just kidding. Okay, give it a chance. Don't judge it too hard. Just wait. Let me talk about the characteristics. This is weird. So just kidding. No, star I actually seeds, do believe in the concept of star seeds. Star seeds look, act, and feel like normal human beings. However, they experience an innate loneliness and a longing to return home. Yeah. See, we don't have that. I do. I long to return okay, to Okay, babe. <laughs> to Saturn. <laughs> To the Shire in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Shire seed. Oh, That's what they Shire should call me. Seed. Oh, my, oh my God. God. That's so funny. One of the most telling star seed characteristics is their feeling of genuine excitement upon learning they might not be human after all. They're naturally drawn to the concept of space exploration and science mm. fiction. Brings them comfort. Mm. All right. Here's the it actual. bring me comfort. Right, it scares me. But here. All right. Let's. That let's get here's some of the more serious characteristics. So, as far as people that could be a star seed, from a young age, you have had an inherent wisdom that usually comes later in life for other people. Would you say that you've been wise your entire life, or you just got wise? Oh, I just got wise. <laughs> I just woke up. <laughs> I just got no, for real. I just got wise though. I actually yeah, feel like I've got gotten way smarter me, so. in the last. Hey, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> in the last couple. Before of years. that, you were just a just a. Puff of air floating around. No, I was a I was a dancer. <laughs> I was a palms dancer. I didn't know shit. No, you didn't. But anyway, now I do. So that's a sign. <laughs> Don't a lot of people. Have you been shit? told that you're an old soul? Uh no. Oh. Actually, yes, a few times. But my sister has more than me. Do you ever feel like you're like old or ancient like you might be like an ancient, yeah i feel like, old inside we're talking about like your soul too right now not just like your physical body so like have you ever felt like your soul is old mm, maybe like a middle-aged soul <laughs> i don't know if it's quite old i don't know if i feel like i still feel like i have a lot of like impatient qualities and curiosity because i've looked into all these different types like indigo child versus yeah yeah it's the same idea yeah and um I think I'm, I don't think I'm the old soul one. No. I think I'm an indigo child, if anything. 
That's where you're like young. I, I think, I think. I think I could be. You have a mission. Because the, these are very interesting and I definitely can Maybe identify with is. some of this stuff. You feel different from those around you. However, you have a natural inclination to relate to their struggles. I do that. I do that. I always felt different than people around me. Your physical body so is an, an, an enigma to doctors. My physical body? Yeah. Is an enigma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can't yeah. figure out what the fuck's wrong with they me. They can't so, understand yeah. it. Yeah, they can't understand it. My doctor told me, uh, I don't know how to interpret these results. That's actually what my doctor said to me. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe Don't I even am. get us started on that shit. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. What about, have you ever had a paranormal or psychic experience or felt a presence? I've had a paranormal experience, but not really a psychic one. I've had like intuition but not like a full-on psychic experience okay do you feel like the physical limitations of your body frustrate you yeah. i think that's everybody right yeah <laughs> seriously <laughs> it'd be nice to fly <laughs> are your dreams more vivid and enjoyable than your real life mm, mm, they're I don't know. There's something comforting about them. I wouldn't say they're more enjoyable because my real life makes a lot more sense and is cleaner and more organized and just better. But my dreams are so comforting. Like there's something about it, the dream world where I just want to go back to it. Oh, like, it's yeah. It's like such a, I don't know why. It's like such a mystical thing. Yeah, it really is. Which, why the fuck do I we dream sleep? every night. Like I, I've never been one of those people who don't dream. Like I've never had a night where I've gone to sleep and I woke up and there was no dreaming in between. I always dream. It's so weird to me. Mm. I don't know, though. I don't know if I'm quite cool enough to be a star seed. Yeah, I mean, I think I think a lot of things are, you know, first of all, I don't know if you can actually, like, pinpoint all these different things. And how are, do we even know if this is, like, an accurate thing? Oh, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so... Disclaimer, I have no idea. This is just this is just a description that somebody uh, wrote up about yeah. starseed. So, you know, and other people say there's uh, people that are light workers. Have you ever heard of that term before? Mm -mm. Basically, basically just like really uh, spiritually connected individuals with the earth and the universe. It's a very new age idea. Obviously. I think there's totally different levels or different groups of different types of souls. I believe in that concept, whether you want it, whatever you want to call it. There's different categories of souls with different missions. I think different soul types have different missions. Does yeah, that make like sense? Yeah, like soul paths and yeah. plans. And I mean, I think it, rain, the idea of a rainbow child or like um, that is really interesting too because that's the idea that you are from another planet or another galaxy yeah. and you came to Earth. Gotcha. There's all different types of yeah. groups and it's really it's interesting basic, stuff. I mean, it's a very like just a deep spiritual idea, but right? It's like what is everyone else then? If you're not one of these cool like names or something like everybody else you? is just a normal ass human, <laughs> just a boring ass. An N A H normal ass. Colonel human. Sanders, man. Colonel Sanders. <laughs> All right. All right. No, no, no. All right. Oh. The, my hang on. My last thing oh. of this subject, and then we won't ever have to talk about this again. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Something called the walk-in experience. Have you heard of this before? Mm -mm. It's a form of soul exchange or soul transference. Whereby one soul leaves or walks out of the body, usually during sleep, and another prearranged soul walks into that body with all of its memories intact. Oh, that's interesting. This is a phenomenon that oh, there's crazy. been a number of people that have had this and where have talked like, about their changed all the time. where you literally feel like you're a different person. Yeah, like you are a completely different individual. Like overnight type thing. Like you wake oh, up one and then so you're like this, weird. you're like totally not, different. Oh, that's crazy. And you have all these like past life memories and things like that. Weird. God, Isn't there's that? some crazy things going on in this earth, man. It's so weird. Oh, tell me about it. Tell me more. Go ahead. Tell me more. All right. I have one more. Okay. So have you ever thought about your birth trauma, Josh? Oh. <laughs> Which trauma? The physical trauma that I yes. caused? Did you have any birth trauma? Was there a to traumatic birthing experience? Was the whole experience... It, what uh, was your birth like, Josh? 
Well, according to the video, it was fucking bloody. It was, what? I looked disgusting. Well, Josh, everyone does. Was there anything like a complication? Did she have to be rushed in? Did she have a C-section? Did Ooh, she have, I don't even was know, the cord man. wrapped around your neck? No, I think I had it. I think, did she have, <laughs> God, call my mom right now. I can't remember if I was the C-section or if my brother was, but <laughs> I think there was some trauma. I think you would know. I don't I think don't either know. of you guys were. No, no, one of us definitely was. I'm going to ask your mom about that. <laughs> anyway, so there's a whole idea about birth trauma and it affecting like your current life right now. The actual birth, the four different stages of coming of the out, physical not birth. growing, not the like yeah, gestational yeah. period, the, the actual delivery. delivery, birth delivery. So there's a lot of different, um, you know, professors and people studying this whole concept. And there's someone specific. Uh, I don't know how to say his name. It looks like Stanislav Groff. <laughs> Professor Groff. And he is the father of transpersonal psychology. And he says that you are probably more affected than your birth experience than you realize. His um, perspective is supported by leading research in the field of pre and perinatal psychology. So there's a biological matrix of emotional imprints and patterns that can often be traced back to your very emergence into this world. Professor Groff refers to these as basic per perinatal <laughs> matrices. No, perinatal. Perinatal. M matrices or BPM. And understanding them can reveal a whole lot about you as a person and provide a great framework for releasing old patterns, healing, and personal growth. Oh my God! No, no, I'm thinking. About, Are you I'm reading something else about your perinatal delivery shit? This right? is very interesting stuff because think about what some people go through yeah, when they're being born. True. So basically, he says he that found? there are four different types. There's four different stages of your actual birth. So the first, um, I'm just going to go through them because it was really, really interesting. Hang on one second. Let me pull this up. Okay. How did you come across this? Um, just on Collective Evolution. Shout out. One of my favorite websites. This is super interesting stuff. Um, so I actually had, when I was being born, I had I had a vaginal delivery like normal, but right before I was about to come out, the cord was wrapped around my neck. So I had birth trauma technically. Gotcha. Because okay. I could have died. Yeah, but yeah, they yeah. went in and like took it off yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah. But pretty normal, right? I think it's pretty normal. Um, but yeah, it, it, the first stage is called the amniotic, amniotic universe. universe. Yeah, amniotic, like amniotic fluid. Okay. So it's like the phase of floating in the womb in a timeless state. Hmm. Um, so this this environment. So it, it basically, depending on your mother's health at this point, because this stage kind of represents all of the whole pregnancy. Yeah. Like how healthy they were, how the pregnancy was, what they're eating, their diet, everything like that. Um, can affect this gotcha. stage. Um, so if you have had a negative experience in that, you may have in your life now a sense of undergroundedness and a disengagement from life. Mm, that's interesting. Isn't that? Huh. And then there's the second phase called the cosmic oppression. And it's where the womb begins closing in. And the picture of this is like crazy. I feel bad for this baby in the little cartoon. He starts getting, you know, he's first in the amniotic universe. He's like you chilling. Like, yeah. And then in the com cosmic oppression, the starts to yeah, muscles yeah, yeah. contract and force right. your ass out. Um, so this is kind of like a scary time for babies. And positive experiences during this stage are associated with current excitement about new prospect or integration of new information and wisdom. So if you had a good experience, you experience oh. that now. But if you are experiencing impending crisis, fear, or resistance to new developments in your life, oh, an in a sense of impending crisis, sorry, then you may have had issues during this stage. Then there's the third phase, the struggle, death, rebirth, which I was like, whoa. And this is when we actually enter the birth canal. And the baby looks very stressed out at this point. His head's like crushed. It's honestly just mind boggling to think to about what happens, birth. right? Like, what? Oh. Birth is crazy. It's crazy. I wanted to educate your ass about this because <laughs> we're going to have kids one day and you need to know. I know. It's. So a positive out. experience in this stage is called the flow state. So if you are like in a, you get, 
in the zone when you are taking care of things as they come up. You take care of things automatically. You're easygoing, engaged in your task. You had a good experience during this phase. Negative experience during this phase is feeling squeezed or crushed by life's um, circumstances, feeling easily overwhelmed by competing in your life's de- competing in your life demands. So this is the stage that I had trauma in. Oh, so shit. I thought that was really interesting because I do a, a real. I get so easily overwhelmed. Yeah, that's interesting. I know. Huh. I know. So yeah, and then the fourth phase is the experience death rebirth. Oh no, that's the that's the third, right? What's the fourth? The fourth phase. Oh, it's the same thing. Yeah. Oh, there's the struggle death rebirth. Is the third, and then it and goes then to the experience experience death, death, rebirth. death rebirth. Yeah, that's really interesting. Huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never thought about it like that before. I know. So there's a whole study on it. I obviously can't get in as in depth into it as I want to, but it's really, really interesting. I'd love to have an expert on this kind of stuff on one day because I think this kind of stuff, there's a lot to do with birth trauma in the spiritual world. There's a lot of meditations about it, um, different practices, Reiki to heal you from birth trauma. Wow. So a lot of people that had, or if their parents were like on drugs yeah, while they were yeah. in there, like your womb experience affects you more than you think. I think it does. I think it probably does. I mean, I think just the whole, I mean, the whole idea of a human being getting their start inside of you and like, yeah, a soul possibly inhabiting that fetus and into that is like just crazy and mind blowing. So like, why wouldn't there be more to it? Why wouldn't there be something more surrounding the birthing process and what happens to you and how that affects you later in life like this is your most vulnerable like this is when you're the most raw like this is you i think a lot of people don't think about what the baby goes through like everyone's mm -hmm. thinking about the mother because it's painful for the mother and they can vocalize what they're going through but a baby can't tell you what that was like to be pushed through a birthing canal on your head like what if it's terrible what if it's extremely painful what if birth is like horrible for babies yeah and we don't even realize that because you know when you come out Normally they're screaming, they're red, their heads fucking crushed, <laughs> like squished yeah, up into yeah. a, a cone. I mean, it's intense for the baby. And I don't, I, everyone's like cheering and happy because the mom's finally given birth and she's out of pain. But I think like the baby's just gone through like serious trauma and then they pass out, they sleep. It's kind of crazy. It really is. Birth is such an interesting thing. Like the more I learn about it, like, cause you know, we're talking about having kids in the next three to five years or so. <laughs> We keep pushing it out further and further. Oh my but God. the more I learn about it, I'm just, it's so fascinating. The whole process, I'm really excited to go through it's gonna be the a, process. It's a spiritual process almost, you know. It really is. It's and very it's very cool. Yeah. I, I'm just happy that we're in a place that we are, that we can, you know, think about things like this and, and think about them in the way that we are and really be able to prepare ourselves and then yeah. really experience you know, having children to the fullest, like that's, yeah. that's what's so cool about it. Well, they sh- it shows you that it might, you know, when women try to really control their birth process and there's, you know, women get shit for being like very serious about their birth plan or like being, you know, mm-hmm. divas to doctors and stuff. But like, it's your baby. You want to make sure that they have a good entrance to the world. So I'm going to be the same way. Like I'm going to try to f- figure out the best way for my child to enter the world and make sure I get as close to that as possible, which is not always possible. But yeah, it's it's such an interesting thing to think about. I never even, it never even crossed my mind what the baby would go through. Because everyone's just like, well, you don't remember it, so it doesn't matter. But it does, like that's ingrained in your mind. A lot of things that you don't remember or you block out or whatever still happen to you and well, still like, has a, an effect on your psyche well i think it's easy for us to say because we don't have any memory of it like i don't know anybody that has a memory of being inside the womb or you know the pro you know their day that they came out of their mo- like n- yeah. nobody has that memory so it's no. easy to just say you know oh nothing happens but for all we know just like we can't remember fucking yesterday yeah there could have been a lot more that happened that had an effect the idea that it has a could have an effect upon your development and you know the type of person that you end up as is really interesting it really is and honestly it makes a lot of sense it really does so that's great i i really enjoyed that but uh yeah i think that's where we'll wrap things up today yes we hope you enjoyed the ponder sesh 
I think yes. we got into some pretty deep and interesting topics. And see, it's fun because like, I don't know if we could do a whole podcast on this unless we have like a birthing expert here mm -hmm. that can like, you know, but it kind of allows us to at least get the conversation going and touch on a few things that we're interested in without having to do a full podcast on it. And it gives us an opportunity to share more with you guys in an hour versus, you know, one thing. No, I like it too. It's like playing like, <laughs> what was that reading game popcorn uh, oh yeah popcorn. popcorn yeah i hated like... that shit if you're dyslexic <laughs> that was like the worst thing yeah ever. i always feel bad for those kids yeah they always would send it to me all the all the jerk boys would like send it to the kids yeah. that struggled especially the girls too they yeah. always pick on the girls so many like, oh, and then i'd get so nervous i'd fuck up even more popcorn topics yeah instead of doing like one Smart. main topic we get to hop around and do a bunch of interesting yeah. stuff so really hopefully fun. you guys liked it and if you did let us know give us a thumbs up if you're watching, Definitely. subscribe on iTunes and YouTube and leave us a rating or a review or just tweet us at Pot. Just do whatever you want. Share the word. We uh, we love doing this stuff for you guys. And, and oh, man, I can't wait for next week. Oh, yeah. You ready for this? Yeah. You guys want a little hint? Should we tell? Yeah. Them? We're going to talk about Scientology. Oh, man. That's and you hint, don't want to know what we're about to tell you about Scientology. It's very interesting. Probably a lot of things that you didn't know. I, I'm surprised at how much people don't know about Scientology, what they're all about, what they actually believe, what's actually going on. You know, there's lots and lots of interesting things that go uh, that go on with Scientology. So we are going to bring all of that to you next week. So hopefully you're excited for that. Yes. But in the meantime, stay woke. So you said it backwards. Oh, stay safe. Oh, it's I didn't right. know there was an order. And stay woke. See you next time, guys. <laughs> Bye.